So let me add my uh, congratulations. Let me also uh, add my uh, deep respect and gratitude to the group sitting up there to your left, my right. Uh, many of the mentors to include General Cody, General Gorman, General Key. Uh, and one of the things you'll do as you go through your careers is you will, uh, you will accumulate. Boy, you're really packed in there. You're looking good now. <laughs> but you'll accumulate mentors uh, who, who help shape and form and, and make sure that that magnetic true north for you is always uh, the right true north. So thank you to that group over there. Uh, so you, you want to know what it's like to be chief of staff? No doubt. It's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, you know, I got a big house. I walk in the morning. I get up. I walk past the pictures of all the former chiefs, including General Marshall. In fact, um, when I was seeking advice prior to taking the job, uh, one particular individual, fairly senior civilian, said, you know, you ought to get a wristband and put on there, you know, what would George Marshall do? But that's the, uh, you know, that's the reverence in which that figure is held. And now you will forever be known as an, a, a winner of the George C. Marshall Award. So I hope, I hope in some ways that helps you feel empowered. I hope it also helps you feel some of the, some of the, uh, let's call it pressure or burden that you are accepting because it's both really. It's, an, it's empowering. But I, hope, I also hope that, like just before a big game in your athletic career, you get that little bit of butterfly in your stomach because we're going to ask a lot of you. And you're going to measure up. And if you think the things that General Gorman and General P and General Cody and General Dempsey have done have been pretty interesting and spectacular, buckle up because I have a feeling that you're in for a ride that will match us and raise us one. Run, run the video for me, would you? Let's see how technology fares. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to take a stand, take a stand. Okay, a little survey. Who, not, don't yell it out, but how many of you know who sang the song in the background? Raise your hand. Now watch this. How many of you know who sang the song in the background? <laughs> I, I get a kick out of doing that. I was at the uh, pre-command course, which is all your future battalion commanders and, and uh, battalion command sergeants, maybe, you know. And I really like the video, and I like the song actually too, but I like the video because it works on a lot of different levels. You know, it's the application of lethal effects, lethal force. That's what we do. That's what we are unique. That's the unique part of our profession, and what we provide the nation is that monopoly on, on lethal force. And that's why you've got to master your weapon. You're not going to remember much about this week. It's a blur. So I want you to remember a few things. I want you to feel the profession. I'll show you in a minute what I mean by that. But in that video, you can see the, le the, the lethal effects that we will place in your hands. Enormous responsibility when we do that. You also see the other things we ask you to do, the kind of nation building things that you've been hearing and reading and listening to. Uh, you can see the interaction of small teams. You know, so you will become a platoon leader or a detachment commander. And you'll have a certain number of men and women who are relying upon you for leadership. You'll have to team with your non-commissioned officers. And those are the things, you know, when you really distill this profession of ours and where you are in it now, that's, that's kind of the, the fundamentals, the blocking and tackling. You've got to master your weapon system. You've got to, you've got to master small unit tactics. You've got to form teams with your non-commissioned officers, and you've got to fall in love with your soldiers. If you don't remember anything else about this event this week, you remember that. And, and I want to talk to you, as I mentioned, not just about understanding your profession, but feeling it. You know, the day I took the uh, job as the chief of staff, my wife and I, in a very private ceremony with my children, all three of them I commissioned, 
went to, uh, and their families. We went to Arlington National Cemetery, and I later read that the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Somebody said, why do you want to do that? What, you know, you're kind of busy, you know, you've got to get ready for the ceremony. I said, because I've been spending a lot of time understanding the job, but I want to, today I want to feel it. I want to feel the job. I want to feel the responsibility. Put up um, Rick Rescorla's image, will you? Will you? Uh, I, this is really an important image in my life. You'll find your own image. But let me tell you why it's important to me and why something like this should be important to you. Rick Rescorla, if you've read the book, We Were Soldiers Once and Young, book about the Battle of the Yadrang Valley in Vietnam, made famous by the movie We Were Soldiers Once and Young. Um, and uh, this is the picture on the front cover of that book. And it, it, I mean, it's a real life figure. His name is Rick Rescorla. This works for me on a lot of different levels. He was an immigrant. He was a Welsh immigrant that came in the army. And um, what this image shows me is the sort of competing, almost contradictory emotions that, that exist in our profession. I ask myself almost every day, why does that guy do what I ask him to do? And you should ask yourself, why will those young men and women who are placed in your care, why will they do what you ask them to do? What is it? There's nothing rational about being asked, as he was, to get out of a foxhole or get out of a bunker, fix bayonets and move into the underbrush in the Adrang Valley in Vietnam. It's not rational. But we do it, they do it, because of trust. Some of you have heard me potentially, I don't know, did you, did you all get the letter I sent out when I became the chief of staff? If you have an AKO address, you, sh you, you should have got it. But I said at the end of that letter that the three things we've got to remember that you can't requisition, you can't put in a, you can't sign a requisition form or get a bag of money and go by whenever you're asked to deploy are trust, fitness, and discipline. And this gets at all of those, but it really gets at trust. Because the competing emotions in the young men and women that we ask to go to war are a mi some mixture of courage and fear, and you can see it, I mean, look at his face, courage and fear at the same time. It's confidence and it's uncertainty. You know, he's going out to do a, fundamentally a movement to contact, an unknown situation, and yet off he goes. So why does he do it? Because he trusts. He trusts that his leaders understand what they're asking and have provided the resources and guidance to do it. He trusts the men and women to his left and right. He trusts his non-commissioned officers. He trusts that somebody all the way back to where his family is living has them in mind and is watching their back as well, kind of this image of the Verizon network as, you, as you've seen it on television. So this is all about trust. It's also about, it's also about a commitment to lifelong service. Here's the rest of the story about Rick Rescorla. He stayed in the army, he survived the battle, he stayed in the army, he, got, he stayed in until he made colonel, he got out of the army, went to work for Morgan Stanley, and became their vice president of security in their New York office in the North Tower of the World Trade Center. And on 9-11, when the first plane hit the South Tower, he was in the North Tower, he immediately began evacuating his employees. And as he did so, he got a phone call from his wife on his cell phone. And his wife said, hey, I saw what happened in the other tower. I, I presume you are headed for the exits. And he said, no, not yet. And she said, what are you, nuts? What, what are you doing? He said, I have to get my, I gotta get my people out. So he stayed in the tower. He evacuated about 2,500 out of 2,700. The tower collapsed and he was killed. He was given a medal for that effort by the Medal of Honor Society. And what does that tell you? That you're a soldier now for life. You're a leader now for life. You are a leader of consequence for life. You have to make a difference. People will expect you to make a difference because they know you've taken that oath, you've sacrificed, you've, you've decided to live an uncommon life. You are now a soldier, and a, well, as I see, we've got some non-soldiers here, but you are a leader for life, and that's the way you need to think about yourself. And you need to live up to this, to this uh, award you've been given. Think about what it means. Feel it. That's what I'm asking you to do. And if this doesn't make you feel it, you're probably in the wrong line of work. But I'll leave that for you to decide until you get that first platoon and you see how it makes you feel because uh, I think you're going to be truly inspired by it and then by you. Okay, go ahead and turn that slide off. So um, what's, we got uh, the third image, I think, is the fight scene, but I'll throw that up in a second. So as you go through the week, and I'm going to give you a couple of minutes here to ask me some questions, but 
I want you to be both thinking about learning your profession, but also feeling. And you're really, you're surrounded by a great group that can help you do that. And as, as I said, if you remember those few words that I've just uttered about the fundamentals, you know, managing your weapons system, building teams, uh, understanding small unit tactics, and falling in love with your soldiers on the one hand, and then that stuff you can't requisition when the balloon goes up, trust, fitness, and discipline. And when you get out there and you're wondering, holy mackerel, I got too much to do. By the way, that's always the case. It was the case in 1972 and 74. It is the case in 1991. It's going to be the case in 2011. Time will always be your scarcest resource. Just never forget that if you have a minute on your hands and you're wondering how to spend it, spend it on building those building blocks of your profession, trust, fitness, and discipline. And, um, and be the keepers of this profession and the keepers of this title as martial award winners. Okay, put, play the fight scene for me, will you? image of the theme I just talked about, you know, this, this notion that there's a million things to do and there's too little time to do it. But you got to make sure you don't let yourself or your unit turn into that long-haired clown, you know, doing the, the handstands, and then have somebody who is focused, who is focused on the fundamentals completely lay you out. And so, uh, you know, there's an image to put in your head. So if you put, if you put in your head this image, in the Eminem song, that was the answer to the quiz, by the way, Eminem. If you, if you put that image in mind, the, the lyrics of that song, by the way, is holla. Now, I don't usually use holla, but <laughs> that's, that's, not a, you know, that's not in my vocabulary, but it is in the song. But holla, if you feel like you've been down this road before. The army's changing. You heard all of the speakers say it. The challenge will be for you to help us lead that change. And, we, and here's the point. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Holla if you feel like you've been down this road before. Well, I'm hollering. <laughs> because we have been down this road before, and we're getting ready to go down it again, and we'll go down it. If you end up, one of you end up in the Army as long as I'm in the Army, you'll take us down that road as well. It's, it's just part of the institution we are. So that image of that song and those images of the, of the different things our Army can and must do for the nation, keep that image. Keep the image of Rick or Scorla or one that you substitute, but that constantly reminds you of why you exist. You exist to tell that young man or woman to put themselves in harm's way. So how do you get ready for that? How do you get them ready for that? And then the third one is the fight scene, which is all about the fundamentals. Figure out what is fundamental in the branch you've selected, and don't just be satisfied to get pretty good at it, master it. And mastering requires a degree of commitment and time and lifelong study uh, that you need to put in your rucksack. But as Marshall Award winners, we have every expectation that you both can and that you will. Okay, I'd like to add my congratulations to you. You are about to give the nation a great gift, and that is your service. And I look forward to seeing you as I travel around the uh, places we send soldiers, and I'll see you in your leadership roles. And maybe you can tell me and give me some feedback about whether you think you've got the right images.